sometimes no one wants to speak out because it would be unpopular to do so. But I've got a question today. Is church bad for your overall well-being? Some will say yes, some will say no. Nigeria is said to have the largest Christian population in Africa, with an estimated 80 million individuals affiliating themselves with Christianity. In addition to the more orthodox forms of Christianity, there has been an explosion of Pentecostal churches. Apparently, there are a staggering 5,000 different Pentecostal denominations in this nation. In the days of the late renowned Nigerian musician Fela, it was to quote the lyrics of one of his popular anthems, suffer, suffer for world, enjoy for heaven. Not so in this day. Many Pentecostal churches preach messages with a focus on worldly wealth being a measure of spiritual blessing. I am genuinely asking, are churches, and particularly Pentecostal churches, good for your overall well-being? Take the weekly calendar of most of these churches. Many of them have daily meetings, and the expectation of the congregation is daily attendance. But I ask, if you work and have a family, when do you have physical rest? And when do you spend quality time with your family? And if you don't work, how on earth will you secure a job if you spend most of your waking hours in church? I strongly believe in prayer, and I have a very strong faith. But after you pray, you also need to act. Praying in of itself will not afford you the skills required to make you employable. Which brings me to my next point. How many of these churches, especially mega churches, generally teach life skills which will foster healthy independence and sustainability? And why are these churches not providing services such as healthcare and education at little or no cost to those who have limited resources? It's surely needed in a nation where the annual education budget is a paltry 5 to 6% of the national cake. Churches should promote physical and mental well-being. They should partner with health professionals to provide health promotion for their members. And yes, actually, I will go there. Using gimmicks to encourage church members to part with money they can ill afford is immoral. Even if an individual gets a windfall, Last time I checked, it required wisdom, not only to gain wealth, but to sustain it too. Prudence too is needed. And what can I say about other forms of abusing church? Naming no names today, don't want to get myself in trouble again, but churches need to be a place of sanctuary for women of all ages, and not a place where vulnerability is exploited. And dear minister of God, I did say dear, Unless you have undertaken a specific mental health training, you are not qualified to manage mental illness. I'll say it again. You, Minister of God, are not qualified to manage mental illness. There is a need for upskilling, but until such a time, please acknowledge the limits of your knowledge and encourage members of your congregation to seek appropriate help. Of course, there are benefits to having a faith. I am not knocking a belief in God or faith. But many of our churches in their current form, are they really good for our overall well-being? I am just not so sure. So what do you think? I, I, initially, I didn't want <laughs> to be the in. one <laughs> to fire the first salvo because for <laughs> saving fire it's already church. poisoned. Yeah. Don't fire the first shot. Yeah, fire it. Church. What is church? Church is, is it the building or the people? So we need to first of all differentiate. Because the church, according to the Bible, is the people. It's not the building we gather in. So if I gather with five of you in the name of Jesus, it's a church already. Okay. So that so means we're in church now. We're in church. If we're yeah. gathering, we don't go. Yeah. So yeah. really, yeah. When this abuse is never going to go away because religion is the opium of the masses. They need it. It's learned helplessness. So parenting, this is where it starts because they will continue to abuse children. People need it and there's poverty. So people will go there, they will tell them lies and they need to hear these lies but constantly. But two things for me, uh, first and foremost, I want to I disagree with that statistics of 80 million Nigeria. Uh, um, you know, why, 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 why do you disagree? Because the statistics because are of time. I would, um, statistics are 47.5 percent of of 200. Well, of, of 200. Of 160 okay, you, or 200. You are so, querying my mathematics. Uh, so, I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> I'm a psychiatrist. That is why I disagree. Okay, okay. So secondly, <laughs> secondly, I. I 
I, you talked about uh, abuse will always be there. For me, and that's why there is government. That's why there are regulations, regulatory body. So you regulate activities. And that's why we all individually submitted our individual rights for a, a re in return protection you know, of, of our collective rights. And do? so that's why there should be regulations. Here we don't want churches or religious body to be regulated. They should be regulated. Because what you have is like what I call a 4 one packaging. You package your mugu, create fear around him, and then open a small narrow opening that leads them to you as the solution provider. That's what our religious body, churches and monks, are gradually turned into, or have turned to churches especially. And that's why somebody will have a mental illness rather than visit a hospital. He will first visit the pastor because it's cheaper. And, uh, because yeah, that's why. That's why. I'm, that's because why I'm what? saying that wrong care. The education is not there. That is why I'm saying that yeah. the, so the regulation government need to regulate these things. So there what are there's, the things that they need there's to need to be education. Also, take for example, why should somebody take a mental case to a church? That church. Should be penalized. No, no, that's going too far. What you're what you're what, what, you're, what, what, you're, what, what is recommending is mm. not is not new. Mm. They've yes. done it in one day. Yes. Okay. You know, and they've, they've no, I wouldn't, seen, I wouldn't agree they've, with seen they've seen that uh, you know, um, religion as it's been practiced now is abused because of you know the level of awareness yes. and you know, level of poverty and all of that. So there's some level of regulation that you know they have applied in that place and we can you know borrow from the wisdom and that regulation closes what is happening what is happening in uh, is Rwanda today that? you know religion it's it's you know it's a very delicate topic today that people just don't want to talk about it mm. they just want yeah. This is a don't go there. Because it's their drug. They need, need it. They want it. I actually yeah, I I I I want to say I something before. To add, to add so that you can react. Okay. Because, please, uh, I need to get in there. On this, on this same issue, to add to what you have just said, mm. you, you find out that if the responsibility of government is to protect people, vulnerable people, so why do you now leave them to the dictate of somebody who also is not properly trained to manage what he is managing? Okay. okay, let me come in. I think you've made your point. So. I think that in my own, my own, do you say, constraint in all of this, not because I can't borrow from everything everyone has said, is that you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Now, because you have people who abuse work. You know we have workaholics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that the work in itself is to blame. But so so I come, let me, let me, let me get there, my brother. Let me get there. So nobody regulates a workaholic. If you want to sleep here seven days a week, it's your choice. So the fact is, there are lots of things we abuse in life. It's up to you to determine. I go to church. I know how much time I'll spend. Just matter how much you poach me and beg me to be a worker and call me for meetings. I choose how much. So I, this is where I maybe go towards um, uh, what Rick is saying. I'm coming now. You can, you can, I need to stay with my flu. So where, what I'm saying is that human beings need to be informed, educated, which is what I think exactly. this application is doing. That these men are not gods. But likewise, this is where I bring the balance in. Doctors too are not gods. I can choose to go to a church to pray for my mentally ill child. It's my choice. After all, when Jesus walked the earth, healing, he healed all manner of diseases. So even the doctors themselves, if they're honest, they will recognize that there are things that are beyond their own capacity. And that's where the God factor, I'm coming. I still need to land that point. You know, I'm on the flow here. So, so ultimately, we need to humble ourselves a little bit and say the pastors are not, are not to be demonized. Yes, they're, they're pastors, they're Pentecostal churches that are abusing their own you know, a capacity, but it doesn't mean that they're outside their remit to administer healing to someone. If I bring my child, that's my choice. So you don't necessarily have to tell oh, me okay. by the yeah. law that so I can't that's do that. I just yeah. wanted, yeah. Can I just come yeah. in now? Mm. So I think what, there are a couple of things we've read. The first thing is about governance. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board, whether it's in churches or we just talked about borders and so many other issues that we've raised last week and this week and beyond. I think that in a, in a proper um, um, setup, churches should be subject to a degree of governance. That's the first thing. And you use the issue about time and being a workaholic. I'm based in UK, as you know. And there is governance about how many hours a week the maximum you can work. Yeah. And at least, at the very least, if you decide to work above the recommended hours, you have to sign the contract as an opt-out. So at least you cannot say that you're not aware of the um, challenges and maybe the risk to overworking. I think the challenge here, again, I believe in prayer. I said it, and I have a strong faith. But as my children would say, people need to keep in their line. I think that as a pastor, if somebody is brought to you with a mental health issue and you know you don't have the competency, 
you should be brave enough to signpost. I think the issue That's here is, is that a lot of pastors see health professionals and other professionals as in competition with them. Well, it had to be said, so I opted to be the one to say it. I guess because I'm jumping on a plane next week back to London. <laughs> After the break, Libras gives voice to a certain neglected but newsworthy aspect of our national development.